Hello, my name is Ed Gramlick. I'm with the National Low Income Housing Coalition. Welcome to Getting to Know the National Housing Trust Fund Law and Regulations. Uh, this is going to be a five part series to explain this new resource that we have that is designed to provide affordable rental housing to extremely low income households. Those are households with incomes below 30% of the area median income. In part one, we're going to be talking about four things. We're going to be talking about the need for the National Housing Trust Fund, talking about how the trust fund is a dedicated source of revenue, talking about that initial source, the initial, de the initial dedicated funds that are in the statute, and talking about the introduction of the interim regulations. So why did the National Low Income Housing Coalition and literally thousands of organizations around the country that were part of the National Housing Trust Fund campaign become involved in this effort way back in the year 2008. Well, here are some relatively recent figures that show that the purpose of the National Housing Trust Fund is to address the gap in rental housing that's both affordable and available to extremely low-income renter households. We see that there's a shortage here of 7.1 million units. Another way of expressing this is that there are only 31 rental homes that are both affordable and available for every 100 extremely low-income households. And 75% of these households are spending more than 50% of their income for rent and utilities. They are severely cost burdened. And the difficulty, the problem becomes even greater because out of that 7.1 million, there are actually a national shortage of 3.4 million homes that are both affordable and available to what we are calling deeply low income households. Households with incomes below 15% of the area median income. DLI is a term that the National Income Housing Coalition has made up. It's not an official HUD term. ELI is an official HUD term. And as you can see, there, there are only 17 rental homes that are both affordable and available for every 100 DLI renter households in the nation. And 90% of these households are spending more than 50% of their income for rent and utilities. They are truly severely cost burdened. So the National Income Housing Coalition and uh, all of our allies uh, as part of the campaign began this effort to secure a National Housing Trust Fund in the year 2000. And we persisted and worked and advocated. And finally, on, Gen on July 30th of 2008, the National Housing Trust Fund became law as part of the Housing and Economic Recovery Act of that year. Quite simply, the Trust Fund is a program for collecting and distributing dedicated sources of money. And by dedicated sources of money, I mean money that is not subject to the Congressional Appropriations cuts that have been happening year in and year out recently. I want to stress that the intent of the National Housing Trust Fund never was and never should be to uh, substitute for existing HUD programs that are, in fact, subject to the Congressional Appropriations process. The intent of the National Housing Trust Fund is to augment, to increase the amount of money that's available to help meet this grave shortage of housing that's affordable and available to extremely low-income households. Basically, the National Housing Trust Fund is going to operate as a block grant to the states. It will not go directly to cities and counties the way home and CDBG money do, so it's quite different. Now, although the trust fund was created in the year 2008, Unfortunately, no money has gone to it yet. Um, the first dedicated sources of money were to come from an assessment of 4.2 basis points on the new business of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are the secondary mortgage markets or the government-sponsored enterprises you might have heard of. And 4.2 basis points is simply 0.042%, a very, very, very small assessment on the new mortgages, both multifamily and single family, that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac purchased from banks and other financial institutions over the course of a year. Out of that assessment, 65% um, is to go to the National Housing Trust Fund, 35% is, is to go to the Capital Magnet Fund. We are not going to be talking about the Capital Magnet Fund in this series. 
Now, before the funds could actually get to the National Housing Trust Fund, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were hit by the banking crisis of the year 2008. So this dedicated source of money was unfortunately put on hold. Fast forward now to December 11th, 2014, and that's when the Federal Housing Finance Agency Director, Mel Watt, finally released the hold of that 4.2 basis point assessment on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's business. Mr. Watt also directed Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to set aside these funds beginning January 1st of the year 2015, and he told Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to be ready to transfer whatever money they collected, whatever assessment they collected throughout the calendar year 2015, to send that within 60 days over to the Treasury Department uh, to be designated for HUD and the National Housing Trust Fund and the Capital Magnet Fund. HUD is estimating that the actual money will get to the state sometime in the summer of 2016. Now, in the year 2008, in the early part of the year 2008, when we were really working hard to get the National Housing Trust Fund passed, all advisors and uh, watchers were reasonably guessing that there would be $1 billion in the trust fund. That's billion with a B. Um, of course, when the financial crisis hit, uh, the activity of Fannie and Freddie shrunk considerably. So how much money might there be in 2016? Well, we really don't know. But HUD's uh, budget request is guesstimating a very, very conservative $120 million for the entire country. Uh, lately, some of our advisors are suggesting that it might be up to $188 million. We just do not know. It really does depend on how much uh, business Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac do in this current year. So we'll have to wait to see um, at the end of 2015, early 2016. We hope that there will be more money, uh, more activity in subsequent years. After Director Watt released the hold on, on the funds in December of 2014, HUD finally issued interim regulations. HUD did in, in, introduce proposed regulations way back in October of 2010, but did not move on them until after the hold was released on, on the funds. So, um, on January 30th of this year, 2015, we see interim regulations. And I want to stress, these are interim regulations. These are not final regulations. In the preamble to the proposed rule, or excuse me, to the interim rule, uh, HUD says that we're going to see what experiences states and developers and advocates have over the course of a year or two, and then based on their experiences, seek comments, and based on their comments, we will issue final regulations sometime uh, in, in two or three years, perhaps. Who knows? Um, the National Housing Trust Fund interim rule is at Part 93, 24 CFR Part 93. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the HOME program, that's Part 92. The comp plan regs are part 91, so we have a nice little sequential numbering system going here. And to the extent that the National Housing Trust Fund law does not have specific requirements, such as targeting to extremely low-income households, HUD's interim regulations are largely based on the home regulations. So those of you who are familiar with the home regulations will recognize a lot of the terminology, and a lot of it is very much word for word, for better or, or for worse. And that concludes uh, part one of this presentation. Uh, as we work on this new resource over the course of time, we'll be adding more material to our website. Uh, periodically check our website. HUD also has a website. Uh, it doesn't have a lot on it at the moment, but as HUD begins to put together guidance, uh, hopefully we'll see a lot more guidance and more information on, on the website. Please feel free to write me or call me with questions, comments, suggestions. Uh, we need to learn with how things are working or not working so that we too can participate in the input about how the final rule should look. And finally, if you're not a member of the National Low Income Housing Coalition, please consider becoming a member. Um, here's how you can do that. You can uh, go online or you can contact our, our field staff at outreach at nlic.org. Thank you very much, and I hope you will check us out on part two, three, four, and five.